In part 1, we covered many important tips such as how we solve the renal headache with this fiberglass product called Cerro Panels to give our wall a seamless look. As well as our Blanco flush mouse sink which over 100 of you have DM'd us to find out more. We posted the FAQ for the flush mouse sink on our lemonade so do follow us there for live updates. Planning for your home menu and wanting to look for an ID but not sure where to begin? Home Trust can help you with that. On the main page, simply click on Get Recommendations and complete a few simple questions. Firstly, select a team you are going for and some of the key design features you are interested to include in your new home. Next, submit details like the floor area and your budget. Finally, complete your contact information. Home Trust will match you with 3 to 5 shortlisted IDs based on your preferences and requirements. It's that simple. Visit HomeTrust.sg now. Let's now take a look at the final kitchen. In continuation from the previous episode, our self-designed curved dining banquet flows nicely into the kitchen counter. As we mentioned before, some ideas of carpenters might be lazy and give you a dead space for your curved edges. In an already tiny home, some sacrifices can be made for aesthetics, but we feel that cabinet dead space is an absolute no for us. If they say not doable, you can show them our video. For now, our doggo's food supplies are stored here. Remember to do space planning for the contents of all your carpentry. You need to roughly know what goes where before you meet your carpenter for on-site measurements. This is how we did our DIY planning on PowerPoint. Unlike other IDs, ours did not provide any detailed carpentry drawings at all. This was perhaps the only drawing we received from our ID throughout the entire reno. We never received any electrical plan or carpentry plan whatsoever. All we had was this. And I guess you're fine with it because to be fair, we already prepared our 100 page PowerPoint deck before meeting IDs. We shared more about how important this is on our Lemon 8, so do check it out for more tips. We only got the actual 2D carpentry drawings after on-site measurements. I personally quite like the old school hand drawings. Different from other carpenters who tend to use digital software. If at this stage you still don't have any drawings, means something not quite right with your ID. We have a tall unit here. Some IDs or homeowners will place the fridge at the corner. But we wouldn't recommend that because you're likely not be able to open the fridge door fully. Let's show you what we mean. Assuming the fridge is right next to the wall, you won't be able to open the internal compartments fully, which may be a hassle for certain fridge models. Thus, a tall unit at the side will allow you to fully open the fridge door. For the tall unit, we requested for a pocket door to hide our microwave. We originally wanted a built-in microwave but decided to go with a portable one instead as it will be easily replaceable should it kaput. The pocket door makes the kitchen neater as well and reduces the sight of appliances. Our ID kindly threw in this small piece of sintered stone for our kitchen niche as good will for the delayed carpentry. As this area is high contact with frequent spills, it is helpful to have a stone top instead of pure laminate. We have our Bosch oven here and below is an extra drawer. You'll notice that we don't have a water dispenser. For homeowners with water dispensers, maybe best to skip this part because we don't want to give you cognitive dissonance. For those who have yet to buy one, hopefully after a sharing your thing twice too. The machines and filters are costly and filter replacement should in fact be done more often than recommended because of bacterial growth. We highly recommend you to watch this CNA Insider episode. Spoiler alert, basically the study found that most water filters ironically increases bacterial count, which means you're probably better off drinking unfiltered tap water which is cleaner. This is the main reason why we don't want the standalone water filter. Out of 5 households in the experiment, one is an outlier that showed the filter actually worked. So at the end of the day, it all boils down, no pun intended, to your beliefs. Anyway, for those of you who are planning to get a water dispenser just for instant hot water, we have a hack. We use a Nescafe Dodge Gusto machine for instant hot water. Simply pour in clean water, load it up and you can instantly dispense hot water to power your 3-in-1 and teas. And for instant ice water, you can consider a fridge that does it. This is our Samsung Family Hub, which is the most expensive device in our house. It also has a built-in auto ice maker which is amazing. Ice management is an often forgotten chore especially if you host frequently. The crushed ice is a guest favorite and so too is the access to cold water. This is how the ice maker looks like from the inside. Basically, you still need to go through a manual process to refill the water tank with white water but no complaints there. One crucial tip for your fridge is to find out the location of the plug and how long the wire is. Our electrician originally installed the socket at the top left hand, but when the fridge installers tried to plug in, they couldn't reach. Our electrician's task had to come down the next day to pull a new socket to the right. We also have one trick to share here. Usually, you're advised to leave some allowance for future fridge upgrades or replacements. Our fridge is already huge, but there's a slightly taller one from Samsung. So remember to take the dimensions of a similar but bigger product. What we did next is to get a carpenter to include this detachable wood panel so that the buffer can be covered up. This fix seems simple but made a real difference visually. If your home runs smart things, this panel is not essential but a welcome companion nonetheless. All your devices can be controlled here. If you have a ring doorbell, this unlocks even more features. You can talk to the person here. Hello. Hi, who's that? Hi, I'm here to deliver one Shetland Sheepdog to Lynn. 
Okay, I'm opening the door right now. Alright, thanks. If your guests arrive or if there's a delivery while you are busy prepping meals, you can talk to them or even unlock the door for them. These panels also syncs up with our Samsung The Frame TV. No idea in what situation this would come in handy, but still a neat feature to have. It also has Spotify app, and as we don't have a proper speaker in our house yet, we use this whenever guests visit. The best part of this fridge is the ability to customize with pictures and drawings. Every time guests visit, we will capture memories for the fridge. A smart thing's motion sensor is magnetically attached to the fridge. We set a rule to turn on the light strip whenever motion is detected in the evening or when the weather is bad. And another rule to turn off all the lights if no motion is detected in the kitchen for 5 minutes. Our kitchen lights are dumb lights connected to a smart switch which is Samsung Smart Things and Google Home compatible. Hey, turn on ceiling kitchen. DIYing a smart home sounds daunting but it's easier than it looks and doesn't cost much more. We're excited to start our smart home series soon, so don't forget to subscribe if you're keen to learn more. Remember to also have this tall divider beside the fridge. This is super important to prevent things and food from falling into the crevice. Some ideas or carpenters may leave this out. Sam came up with the idea of an arc dish rack. We searched high and low to find an example online to show our ID but couldn't find one. We are super proud of this and really thankful to our carpenter for being able to bring our pencil sketches to life. Hopefully this is some design inspo for you and we expect to see arc dish racks becoming a thing soon. Most ideas will give you that basic dish rack that can be closed up. We personally don't want that because you'll be open most of the time to air dry the wet dishes. The dish rack is from Excel and is simply drilled into place. The arc is also functional for us to dry cookware and we also love the way the light from the light strip unintentionally illuminates the curved edges of our dish rack. We even thought about removing this button tray so that water can drip directly into our sink. Cabinets were designed around the arc. This is one of the few places in our house where we have sacrificed space for aesthetics. Similar to our arc mirror in our foyer, we got the carpenters to add these two thin pieces so that it flushes nicely and does not end abruptly. The top and bottom cabinets have to be aligned. We didn't fuss too much about the dimensions of the different compartments because this was the only way our carpenters could accommodate the arc dish rack. Instead, we went to find a perfect fit rice dispenser for this small cabinet. Here is how the bottom of the sink looks like. The grey plastic patches are what we DIY white to cover some holes that our carpenter was not able to. This was how it looked like beforehand. We sealed it up to mitigate moisture damage to the insides of raw exposed wood and prevent pests from hiding inside. Next up is the service yard pipes box up. The first one is at the corner and our L-shaped compartments were designed around the unhackable service yard beam. We also got the carpenter to do some tiny shelving where possible. No matter how small, you can always find the right things to fit in nicely. We requested for the insides to be seamlessly connected for more flexible space use. We opted for a slim fit box up instead of one that protrudes to the edge so that we could have this extra countertop space that flows seamlessly all the way to the windows. The depth of the bottom counter is 60 and the box up and top carpentry is 37. The height of our countertop is 90 in total. Depending on your height and comfort, the industry average is about 85. Even now, we still find that 90 is too short for us. Maybe 95 would have been better. For those who want a slim fit box up, note that you probably can't escape a protrusion at the top of the box up. This is unavoidable due to the protruding pipes. At the extreme end is where our 2-in-1 washer dryer is located. This is a Samsung Quick Drive 9.5kg and we highly recommend this. The best part about a washer dryer is you don't even need to be around to take out the clothes to transfer it to a dryer. It can seriously wash and dry clothes, even bed sheets, in 3 hours. No joke, they really come out hot and dry. But not all materials are suitable, some will shrink over time so we only use this for our old clothes or when urgent. We did away with skirting in the kitchen and epoxy grouted our towels to tidy the edges and give the flooring a more polished look. On the other side, we spammed drawers. We find drawers extremely helpful in the kitchen. One thing to take note of in your ID quotation, get it itemized or in writing the X number of drawers are included for carpentry. We didn't know about this and it ended up being a hidden cost at $60 to $80 per drawer for the Bloom Runners. This Bloom Tender Box Space Twin is a must have for condiments. We bought through our ID at around $130. These compartments must be decided before your carpentry measurements so that the carpenter can take the dimensions and design accordingly. When we were renting, we realized that the previous tenants spilled some peppercorns and they got trapped in the tiny gap. To prevent spillage of sauces and protect the carpentry, we immediately mass bought IKEA Vaviva drawer mats and cut them to size for all our drawers and cabinets. Another important tip is for the cutlery drawer. We bought the IKEA Stridia cutlery trays at only $6 and pass it to the carpenters to bring back to their workshop and design the drawer dimensions around it. These perfect fit drawers impressed quite a lot of our guests, especially those who have recently completed the reno and struggled to find an off-the-shelf cutlery tray that could fit nicely without gaps. There's a big peninsula here for us to prepare meals, as mentioned we designed for a recessed power track here. 
Our switches are located here for our hood and hob, which are from the Bertazzoni Modern series. This is our hood. Some friends thought this was a touchscreen TV. Yeah, and others thought our real TV is a photo frame. Anyway, this inclined hood comes with a black glass and touch controls. To test whether it works properly, you can simply do the tissue test. This is how the glass looks like open up. There is also another extractor here. This hood installation also gave us a headache. Our ID recommended us to find our own installer. Behind this wall is a common bath and neither the carpenter nor the electrician are confident to install as there may be water pipes running through it. Makes sense also and it has got nothing to do with the carpenter to begin with. We reached out to our salesperson from Audio House and she recommended a vendor called Mr. Ong. Mr. Ong is super professional. He told us our electrical point location is wrong and our electrician had to relocate it. If you have a similar wall mounted hood, chances are your electrical point should be as high as possible but best to check ahead of time. Luckily this was done before our serial panels were installed. We seldom see videos of how hoods are installed, so thought to show you how a real professional does it. Firstly, confirm the measurements, especially if you have chimneys that you want stretched out to the ceiling. Secondly, mount the bracket, followed by the hood itself and the outlet thingy. It was at this point that we all realized that the product does not come with the duct. Yeah, Mr. Ong said most hood brands do not provide the duct and thankfully he has an extra one in his van. No, he didn't give it us for free, we paid $80 for it. So do look at your hood instruction manual and see if it includes the duct. Nowadays, the instruction manuals try to be so minimalist until no words, so you might not catch it. The icon shows a box which means it's included and if it shows a shopping cart, it means it's not included. So if time permits, buy it cheaply online or at those DIY stores at around $25 or so. Mr. Ong also used aluminium tape which conforms well to give a vapor seal so the connections are airtight and running efficiently. Also, as you can see, the metal chimney is very thin and flimsy. It helped to reinforce it with wood in the middle section. And it's done. After saying this, you'll understand why we highly recommend a professional hood installer. Try not to take your ID software to have the carpenter or any rando to install your hood because they probably won't be as detailed or have the right expertise to do so. Just like what happened at my parents' BTO. We haven't spoke about my parents' BTO. As you know, we got two BTOs in this project, our four room and my parents' three room under the HDB multi-generation priority scheme. A lot of people don't know about this MGPS trick. To find out more about it, check out our Lemonade post. Long story short, my parents got the same ID firm but a different ID and a different carpenter. Their entire reno journey was quite a nightmare but the way their hood was installed was shocking. My parents used a slim telescopic hood which was installed by their ID's carpenter. Firstly, the fingers can't even access the switch. Secondly, the carpenter left a hole like this and you can even see the internal PVC laminate. The carpenter apparently also said that the filters are not required and thus didn't install them. What? By a stroke of luck, one of the bulbs blew and Bertazzoni sent out someone to replace the about. The gentleman was surprised that the filter wasn't installed which defeats the purpose of the hood. And whilst installing the filters, he uncovered something far more disturbing. Basically there is... Totally no suction. Totally no suction. No. But they're supposed to absorb yeah. then got some air so ventilation. Right. Here is totally nothing. This one. This one cannot pop one. Once you pop out, the air sucks in where to go. Hmm. Frankly shock. Our own place is a wall mounted hood so we didn't research about slim under carpentry hoods prior. In fact, the ID and the carpenter even said this is how hoods are installed in Singapore. But they don't experience. Yeah. You let them know, you see, all these. Uh, you come in, it go to somewhere. Mm. Go up. Okay, the okay. uh, mm. Thanks, uh, okay. All these, uh. But here, you need to take the cannot cover it. Cover it, air suck in. Then go mm. out, then there's a no suction. No. Mm. For those of you who have kitchen hoods like this, do perform a tissue test to see if it works. When we shared this briefly on IG, there were a couple of homeowners who were shocked and only now learned that their hood wasn't working as well after living with it for years. We couldn't find much information online, no video went into such deeds. Sam eventually had to think of a solution himself and drew it out for my parents' ID. In layman language, the slim hood has a hole that cannot be covered up. We will ourselves buy a duct like what our own hood installer used to duct it up all the way to the top of the carpentry to a grill. So air will flow in here go through the duct and come out from the grill. The duct will then be boxed up with carpentry that remains accessible. Internal shelving will be nicely done around the box up. In short, it becomes a chimney hood. Which also means you should consider a proper chimney hood rather than this slim kind. Finally, this is how it looks like with the carpentry doors installed. The hood will be resting just beneath the carpentry doors, thus also solving the original problem of inaccessible fan switch. Who thinks Sam can be a home reno consultant? Anyway, after 2 months of dilly dally, my parents' ID and carpenter finally solved the issue. Look at how sensible it looks like now. The doors are flush and here is our drawing brought to life. The duct is boxed up by carpentry and kept accessible with screws. This internal space is an important sacrifice to at least channel the air upwards. The tissue test works like a charm, both at the input and the output. Are you interested for a home tour of my parents' room BTO? Leave your comments below and if there's enough demand, we can feature it for a future episode. 
an early idea we had for our home was to channel the hood duck all the way to the top of the carpentry out the window. But if you find out you have an unhackable beam, then probably not. Also, you are unlikely not going to have top carpentry in the service yard area because of your laundry hanger system on the ceiling. Speaking of laundry system, Stagen kindly sent us their latest Solar Pro. This is a life saver for us. We run the solar dryer after washing our clothes and they will be 95% dry in just 3 hours. We'll share more about the Solar Pro in a future episode, including a hack on how we managed to sync the light with our Tuya smart switches. Our kitchen faces the west, so while we get to see the most beautiful sunsets, we also have to face the long relentless western sun. We highly recommend the 3M Prestige series window film. It blocks out up to 99.9% .9 of UV rays and most importantly reduces heat in our home while allowing natural light to enter. Jastec is 3M's authorised distributor and applicator and provides warranty up to 15 years, longest in the market. The Prestige series comes with 5 options ranging from the PR20 to PR70. The number means the percentage of visible light that can be transmitted into your home. So PR20 is the darkest tint and PR70 is the lightest. We decided to go for PR50. We shared this on Lemon 8 so check it out if you are interested. There's only one thing we failed to resolve in our kitchen. Before we get to that, let's talk about towels and waterproofing for new BTOs. Some of you have reached out and seemed confused about the BTO kitchen and bathroom towel regulations and waterproofing warranty. So let's summarize it. Information accurate as of April 2023. For the kitchen, you have the option to hack the towels that came with the BTO. If you don't hack, you can enjoy the 5-year waterproofing warranty which protects you in the event your unit caused the leak to your neighbor's ceiling below. Anyway, it is perfectly fine to hack and replace the kitchen towels but doing so, you will avoid that warranty, so touch wood. But if anything happens like washing machine keys or water pipe burst, then HDB will help with the liabilities. This is different from the bathroom which does not allow you to hack the towels at all for the first 3 years. This is why for new BTOs, the only option is to overlay the bathroom towels, as we have seen in our past videos. This also comes with a 5-year waterproofing warranty. Hope this is a good summary, but of course, please check HDB's website for the latest up-to-date guidelines. For us, we decided to overlay our kitchen tiles so as to maintain a 5-year waterproofing warranty. This task created a slight hurdle for us. As we kept our living room tiles and overlaid the kitchen, a height difference is created due to the thickness of the tiles. Our ID said he can't do anything about it, even though we thought that in the earlier discussion, he mentioned that a gentle slope could have been created. Maybe we heard wrongly. Maybe we should have taken minutes. <laughs> anyway, this is how we live with it for the moment. A floor mat cushions the step up and this also helps our Dreamy L10 Ultra Robo roll into the kitchen. We also recently bought this 2cm slope thing online. We'll try to DIY a solution and share the fix in our future Reno Regrets video. With that, our home renovation has come to a close after 20 weeks. We want to thank each and every single one of you for following us on our journey. Fret not, our channel does not end here. Our journey continues with more in-depth home living reviews and our smart home series. We want to help all you fellow Swakus DIY your smart home too. In the meantime, we are always happy to speak to you on IG. We are also active on Lemonade for those who love the deeds. And if you are feeling nice, do subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode. Bye! Bye.